Well, welcome back. Here's the second part of uh, curve sketching, uh, another thrilling video, I might add. So now we're going to actually take the function, analyze it, and then we'll sketch it. Uh, and we're going to be looking for extrema, inflection points, uh, asymptotes, uh, where it increases and decreases, and so on and so forth. So uh, we've got an attack pattern for trying to do these. So number one, pay attention to the domain of the function. Is there anything you can't plug in? Um, is there a vertical asymptote in there? Uh, so that would be the number two. Um, and so pay attention to, to the domain, figure out if you have any asymptotes, vertical uh, or horizontal. So with horizontal, that means you're taking the limit uh, and then uh, possibly and oblique. Okay, uh, number three, find any relative extrema and intervals of increasing, decreasing. Uh, so that would be going off the first derivative. Uh, let's see, horizontal, that would be limits. And inflection points in concavity, that would be using, and everybody would say, the second derivative. So once we have these four things, then we can put everything together and sketch the curve. So let's take a look at this one. Now you can also use any other tips, um, techniques that you've uh, learned from other classes. <coughs> Excuse me, so like if you had a really good Algebra 2 teacher in high school, um, you went over especially a, a lot of these types of graphs. Um, so like for this one, x to the third, uh, x to the third graphs, when there are other terms in there, if it was just x to the third on its own, that would just be, you know, just a regular slide. But if there are other terms, x to the third graphs look like this. They look like an N. Uh, and then if there's a negative in front of it, it flips it upside down and it looks like that. So knowing your algebra 2 or any intermediate algebra can help a lot uh, with, with this types of stuff because you have an idea as to what it looks like. And then they, uh, when you analyze it, it'll tell you exactly where to put stuff. Okay, so the domain of this, all reals, uh, no asymptotes. Uh, so now we're looking for any relative extrema. So let's get the first derivative. So we'll leave the negative one third alone. You can distribute it if you want and then do the derivative uh, or leave it out and do the derivative of the inside. You just do not need the product rule. So three X squared minus three. So if I multiply the negative one third in, negative X squared plus one is equal to zero. So if I solve that, X is going to equal plus or minus one. So these are my critical numbers. So let's do a sign chart. Choose some test numbers. And where do we plug these test numbers? That's right, back into the derivative. So if you plugged in the negative two into your derivative, either here or here, it's going to come out as a negative, plug in the zero, you get a positive, plug in the two, and it goes right back to negative again. So we know the graph is increasing uh, from negative one to one and decreasing from negative infinity to, oops, to negative one, union one to infinity, which goes along with this sketch right here. It decreases and then increases and then decreases again. All right, so second derivative, we can go off of this guy. So that would be negative two X is equal to zero. So X is zero. So now you have a possible inflection point. And I say possible because it's not a guarantee, you gotta test it. So when you do the second derivative, don't just set it equal to zero and solve for x and then call it a day and go, oh, hey, I found them. You gotta test them first. Because it's only an inflection point if concavity changes. 
Okay, so go plug in the negative one into your second derivative and it comes out as positive. Plug in the one, it comes out as a negative. So it's concave up from negative infinity to zero and concave down from zero to infinity. And let's see, so now you have an actual inflection point because the concavity did change and so it is occurring when x is zero. So if you plug that right back into your function, the y value is a negative two thirds. So I, I totally forgot to get the extrema. So your relative max is when it switches from positive to negative. So when x is one, you plug that back into your function and it comes out as a zero. You got a relative min at your negative one. Plug that back into your function and it comes out as a negative four thirds. So all of the information here that we just analyzed matches up to this graph because it's concave up for the first half concave down with one point of inflection. So now let's just stick it onto a graph. So it's going to decrease until it gets to x equals negative 1. It's going to increase until you get to x equals 1 and it hits its relative max right on the x-axis and then it decreases for the rest of the way. So there's your extrema, there's your inflection point. All right, and that's how you do this. So in the next video, we'll look at an example that's a little bit tougher.